<laughs> so um, here we are back in my driveway. Uh, I was trying to be clever and I've mounted the camera on the windscreen and I was going to drive the car and give a commentary about the car at the same time, a bit like a Chris Harris video. But uh, it's clear that my brain is not up to such multitasking because I nearly rear-ended a Toyota within the first 10 seconds of starting the video. So much safer to be back here in my driveway, although me crashing is probably pretty entertaining viewing as well. Anyway, this is my uh, six month review, uh, uh, six month ownership review of my 991911, um, what I think of it so far after six months. I've done just over 12,000 miles in six months, so I'm racking up the, um, the miles, and I think a lot of that's because I just love driving the car. Any excuse to drive the car, sometimes even when I don't need to go anywhere, I will go for a drive in the car because I love it that much. More than any other car I've ever owned, I just love driving this car. Anyway, in this view review, I will go over what I love about the car. Uh, I'll go over the options list that I had and pick out a few options that uh, I think that I love the most. Um, I'll go over some of the issues I've had. Um, I've had four warranty uh, issues with this car so far, which is a lot for a car of this dollar value. Um, and finally, um, I'll think about what I would do differently next time. I'll probably get a, a Turbo or a Turbo S at some point, and so maybe I'll look at uh, tweaking what options I got and go over that with you. Anyway, so I hope you enjoy this video, and if you've got any uh, questions at the end of the video, just leave them in the comments. Thank you. So, on with the review. And as I said before, no surprise, uh, my favorite thing about the car, of course, is driving it. And, um, and that's regardless of whether I'm giving it a good thrashing or just commuting to work or going away for the weekend. Uh, it is a fantastic car to drive and it's such a predictable car to drive uh, even at its limits you know when I'm sliding around in the snow it's so easy to control it's, you just know exactly where it's going to go uh, I end up getting the rear wheel drive model not the four wheel drive model because my driving style I, I enjoy a little bit of tail happy fun um, I'll probably consider a four wheel drive next time but I, for, for my money I enjoy the rear wheel drive more um, and the engine, I love the engine, um, the, the power seems to come in surges just as you're thinking shit this is powerful and another surge of power comes, it's more and more powerful as you head up the rev range, uh, it's a, just a lovely engine both in, in performance and in sound. So yeah I think that uh, driving the car uh, is just a joy whether I'm taking the dog for a ride or whether I'm going away for the weekend. And I use this car for all sorts of things. So I've got the, the roof transport system, so I stick my bike on there, or skis on there, or, or kayak on there. Or even from time to time, um, you know, I'll stick lumber or something else on there. It's my only car, so it gets pressed into doing everything. Uh, a close second to driving the car is just looking at the car. I think the 991 shape is an achingly beautiful car. Um, and I don't think videos or photos really do it justice. You've got to see one on the road or see one in person to really um, see what a beautiful piece of metal it is. I've seen, you know, there are so many colors and wheel combinations and bits and pieces you can add onto them. Um, and I'm yet to see one that I don't like the look of, you know. It's all a matter of taste, but uh, every, every time I see a different configuration, I think, wow, that, that looks great as well. So I think it's just a beautiful looking car, both inside and out. Okay, so let's move on to options. Um, there is an endless number of expensive options for these cars, um, and I ended up getting a boatload of them. And uh, even with all the options I got, I could have gone a lot further, but I needed to rein in the cost at some point. Um, as it turns out, the three options that I had the most trouble picking or deciding on whether to get or not uh, also happened to be the three most expensive options, the three options that were over $4,000 each. Uh, the Burmeister audio package, the uh, dynamic chassis control and the PDK transmission. Those three options are all over $4,000 each um, and they were the hardest for me to choose whether to get them or not and so I wanted to take a moment to talk about those three. I also wanted to talk um, briefly about a free option, the Instruments in Black, uh, which is something I see on the um, talked about on the forum a lot, and I wanted to give some advice on that as well. Okay, so let's start with the most expensive um, option first, 
the, Mer- the Burmeister high-end surround sound system, which is actually an audio package. It comes in at an eye-watering $5,000 here in the U.S. Um, you do get more than just a stereo upgrade for that money. You get the um, satellite radio receiver, um, the HD radio receiver, the online services, and the really useless 6-CD changer. Um, but that hardly makes it a bargain. It's a $5,000 upgrade, which is an enormous amount of money for a stereo upgrade. Um, especially considering there's a middle model Bose upgrade as well, which is only $2,000. Um, basically, the Bose is a 400-watt system and the Burmeister is an 800-watt system. But really, there is an enormous amount of difference between the sound quality between these two. I really wanted to like the Bose. Um, and I think most people go with the Bose. And it's a perfectly good system and it's very loud and it's very nice. But compared to the Burmeister, I think the Bose sounds a little flat. I've, I've had Bose in several of my cars and I've always been a little disappointed with it. Um, but it's still a great system. Um, but what decided it for, for what, how I decided was I had two cars side by side and I sat in one with the Bose system and listened to a couple of my crappy 80s um, MP3s. And then I sat in the Burmeister car and the difference was enough that I was, wow, this really does sound fantastic. And so I ended up going with the Burmeister and frankly, I love it. It is such a magnificent system and I'm not an audio guy you know my home stereo system is a crappy Denon with some shitty speakers held together with some wet string basically um, but I do love the stereo in this and so you know if you can if you can afford it I'd, I'd certainly go for it if you can't afford it certainly don't listen to don't do what I do because it did because it, it will convince you if you sit side by side two cars uh, and listen to how fantastic the Burmeister is, you'll see what, what you're paying for there. Okay, so the second option I struggled with was the uh, PDCC, the Porsche Dynamic Tracy Control, which on its own is a $3,000 package, but most people bundle it with the sport suspension, and I think everyone would do that in the end, so it makes it a $4,000 option. Uh, what does it do? It's the chassis control that allows the car to corner flat you know it doesn't lean into corners Um, how effective is it i think it's very effective it really gives you a lot of confidence in your driving Um, i don't know some people say it's not necessary it's only necessary for people that track their cars but um i don't know every ever since owning this car and driving other cars i find every other car now to it feels like a bit of a roly-poly car uh, it's it's a little bit of a difficult um, option to demonstrate. Um, basically, if you throw your car hard into the corner, it stays flat. Um, some people like it, some people don't. I guess it's a matter of uh, opinion. There was an interesting um, article in uh, Motor Trend recently where they were looking at a bunch of cars and um, the, the Carrera 4S was in there. Uh, it was the only one that had a roll angle of less than one degree um all the other cars including um including the gtr and so forth were all over two degrees and so it is definitely a a product that works and works well um and it's something that's really helping uh the carrera models to win all the competitions at the moment uh all these magazine competitions is that it's you know the handling is so fantastic in these cars and and i think the um the dynamic chassis control is a big part of that and finally the pdk transmission and i guess this was a hard decision for me because i do love driving a manual transmission car and it wasn't so long ago that i promised myself that i would never own a car with anything but a manual transmission however these dual clutch boxes are simply amazing Um, and if you want the best of both worlds that is a car that has the best performance and is the easiest to drive the the PDK is the only way to go. Uh, It is simply a magnificent gearbox and uh, it makes driving this car hard or driving it easy so simple. Part of me still wishes that I was one of the cool kids with a manual transmission but at the end of the day if you want the best best of everything the PDK is the only way to go. Okay, one last option I wanted to quickly mention is the option of instrument dials in black. 
Uh, by default, the S cars, the Boxster S, Cayman S, Carrera S, and so forth, um, have the center gauge, the um, rev counter, as gray. I guess it's some Porsche marketing thing they decided that would look cool. Um, but a lot of people seem quite unhappy with this option when they get their car delivered and realize that uh, one dial is the different color to all the rest. Um, they go to then go to the expense of having the dash removed and putting in the black um, the, the black dial to match the rest um, when you could have just ordered it with black if you just picked instrument dials in black. So uh, don't forget to consider that when you're configuring your car if you want all your dials to look the same. Um, tick the instrument dials in black, it's a free option. Okay, so next up is issues and annoyances. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've had four warranty issues so far. None of them are majors, none of them have left me stranded. Uh, two of them were resolved straight away and two of them have sort of been ongoing. Uh, the first was um, the backing sensor system. Uh, one of the little radar things went out. Uh, they replaced it straight away. Um, the only problem I have with it is that if you have a look at this picture, the one on the left is one of the original sensors and the one on the right is the one they replaced it with. So it definitely looks like a different colour, but they seem to think it's close enough. Uh, the next issue was the heater stopped working. It actually stopped working when it was really freezing cold here on the east coast during Thanksgiving. And when you don't have a working heater, you suddenly realise what an amazing feature that is in a car. Anyway, uh, it's some valve that they have to replace. And according to the, uh, the Porsche engineer guy, he said that it looks like there's going to be a 100% um, failure rate on uh, the 991, 2012 and 2013 models. So if you've got one of those, expect that to happen at some point. Uh, the next problem is something that was happening quite frequently when I first got the car and now they've fixed it mostly. It only happens maybe once a month, which is the car doesn't start first time. Um, it does start the second or third time normally. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a nuisance and an embarrassment more than a real issue. And third and final problem, which is by far the most annoying problem I have, which they still haven't resolved, is this problem. Yes, that screaming whistling from the sunroof. And I don't think it is a problem with the sunroof. They seem to think it is the sunroof. I think it's something to do with the venting in the car. Because it only happens when the car is really, really cold. Uh, I think the vents get frozen up and it, the air can't escape, and so it, it forces its way through the sunroof. Anyway, so hopefully they'll figure that out sooner or later and we'll have that problem resolved as well. And finally, what would I do differently next time? Well, one of the things I wouldn't bother with is the yachting blue seat belts. Uh, they look blue in the photo, but in real life they just look black and so that's kind of a waste of $500. Uh, I think next time I would get um, either the red ones or the silver ones for a bit of contrast. Uh, the second thing I would change would be, well, I got deviated stitching on just about everything else. I didn't get it on the steering wheel, um, partly because I thought that I was overdoing the, the deviated stitching and partly because um, all the other deviated stitching is um, French stitch, whereas the steering wheel is cross stitch. And I thought it would look odd or different, but in fact it looks great. So next time I'll definitely get deviated stitching on the steering wheel. Anyway, thanks for watching my video and I hope this has been of interest to some of you. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll see you next time. Thank you.